How is it going, everyone? Dry Gaming here. Welcome back to episode number 65 of my Dry's Topic Wednesdays. And obviously, this is going to be a part two of my mini series for Black History Month, the month of February, which is also my birthday month as well. My birthday will be, of course, on the 21st. I didn't mention this in the first video, um, but I just thought about it. <laughs> nevertheless, uh, but nevertheless, last week we talked about, of course, the black household and just in general, the things that goes on and what lead to the black household being destroyed and so forth, etc. Now we're going to talk about what the cause and effect of the black household uh, becoming what it is today. You now, our procreate rather, uh, in a sense. Now, what happens next and what comes next is going to be, of course, the fact that it creates um, women who are too overly independent and at the same time as well forming the angry black woman or some people like to say the angry black woman syndrome so to speak maybe saying to yourself rather what do you mean by that well for starters i explained to you guys in the last video uh, if you guys didn't see part one then be sure to go and check it out and it would definitely make more sense uh, pertaining to what i'm going to be talking about in this week's episode now, because of all of those issues that's happened, uh, a single parent mom being in our home by herself and having, you know, being able to tell a guy to leave and not be able to have a man in the house, it empowers her in a certain way to as well to um, create that false, um, I guess you could say that, that false security as being, um, you know, independent in the wrong way so to speak so in a sense it's in her view it allows her to be independent because there's a man that's absent from the home um in a sense not even by her doing but by the law so to speak because of course by law if you're on welfare and so forth etc getting child support then a, a man cannot be in the whole soul and especially when uh, child service and so forth comes out those are some of the things that they check for to make sure there's no uh, evidence of a man staying there and so forth can of course have repercussions so because of that and because of the man is being ab absent from the home of obviously this doesn't stop the mom from dating but it also enters because therefore the, a, a man is not supposed to be there or believing at the house so it makes things a little difficult now if you're having a man in and out of the house uh you may not celebrate with this one person the person can't stay there you have a young daughter that's seen these things a young male that's seen these things especially if the man is putting his hands on, of course, the mom or the man maybe messing with the kids and so forth, etc. You know, in, a, you know, the ways that they're not appropriate for him to be doing. Then you see where it's going as far as creating and the domino effect that it creates not only in the household, but, you know, spreading, um, you know, expanding out word as well by those individuals who have experienced these things and therefore would then go down that path, the path of destruction, so to speak, in a sense. Now, mainly what I wanted to point out too as well is that the angry black woman syndrome, therefore, and the, you know, the woman being overly independent and being too independent is then created by this structure as well. And what that structure is, is a simple fact that the mom is there by herself. She sees her by herself then grow up feeling like she can do it all by herself because her mom did it, I can do it. My mom is teaching me and show me how to be independent. My mom is telling me to be independent. You don't have to be, or if whenever I ask, where's my dad? Don't worry, I'll do it by myself. Your deadbeat dad doesn't need to be here. Or you're no good, nothing, dad doesn't need to be here. He's not doing anything. I'm independent, I can do it by myself. And you need to be independent too. You need to grow up and be independent and take care of your own business. And therefore that gets instilled in that young child, the young female at young age. And she grows up taking on, of course, the persona that she saw from her mom and may even be other family members around because it's not just their single home. Like I said, this is a big issue in the black community in, in, in general. So therefore, you know, their friends may be living in a single parent home too as well. The possibility there is very, very high. Uh, so therefore, all of them is kind of having this mixture of stuff that's going around. So not only do you have one household here or friends that she's, you know, friends with the school and so forth, et cetera, outside the home is also experiencing that same thing. So that's the thing, the, the, the topics that they sit down and talk about, that's the thing that they kind of relive. In fact, those are some of the practical, the same things that probably brings them together as friends and therefore 
um, the whole thing creates where they may grow up not feeling like they need to depend on men so much because you know, look what that did for my mom. Uh, my dad wasn't there or my stepfather beat it on me or my stepfather wasn't there for her either. My mom was a, you know, a fool or whatever the case may be. And in a sense for them, it almost seems like they're taking on this persona of being a strong black woman and being told to be a strong black woman to take care of yourself. You know, there are parents that are actually telling their kids these, this, you know, especially particularly in particular women telling their girls to be independent and, you know, be overly independent. You don't need a man in your life. You don't have to depend on a man versus it being, you know, be independent and find yourself a successful man to procreate and you know to settle down with and have a relationship with and so forth etc uh, but at the same time you know find a man where you can you know also you guys can share and be and you know just give them the whole idea of what is supposed to be uh for a woman perspective uh join into a relationship and what a man perspective is supposed to be as well uh, which in then of course in itself creates issue because there's a lack of that in fact african-american household lot majority of the parents don't even talk about sex. There's no sex ed. I mean, majority of the sex ed comes from them learning on their own or, of course, learning uh, through school, um, you know, sex ed in school and so forth, etc. Apart from that, majority of them don't learn that stuff. Whereas if you talk about their counterparts, you know, Caucasian, so forth, etc., um, it's not necessarily the same. You know, those parents actually take the time out to talk to their kids about these things, the birds and the bees and so forth, etc which then you know help them understand certain things a little better we are just getting thrown into it being peer pressure into it which don't get me wrong this is all across the board too as well but it's just that in african-american community uh less of that happens there's no one there telling them how to do these things and, and unfortunately for me i had the sex talk with my dad <laughs> not necessarily my, i guess i'm a mom too as well so both of them uh but i know plenty of people plenty of friends that never had the sex talk and there's plenty and, and and I, and I don't mean this in a bad way because I've dated different races as well, but every single black girl that I've dated and I'm from Jamaica, so even Jamaican girls as well have stated that their, their parents never sat them down and talked to them about it, especially if the person was involved in church and so forth. I think it was more of a case where it was just unfamiliar to them. So it's just something that never really just came out and the affection that they needed was never there to as well. Sometimes the mom, you know, has a lack of affection to the female compared to uh, the son as well, which sometimes can tell, you know, can help the son be a little more, um, you know, be a little more uh, progressive, I, I could say. Um, and, you know, a bit, a bit more of a, I guess in a sense you can say a proactive, um, so, you know, members of society, so to speak. Uh, but again, like I said, if it's one on one kid, when it's just one kid, it can definitely help. When it's just more than one kid, it then creates a problem because one kid is going to get, you know, locked there off of the support they need and so forth. Um, so, those are some of the things that necessary that normally happens in that. And like I said, that in itself then breeds the whole um, incorrectness when it comes to, of course, uh, independent and, you know, African American women being independent in the wrong way because they overly see being independent as being able to take care of themselves, being able to stand up for themselves, stand up to a man, you know, almost in a, in a sense, taking on, of course, the man's role. Now, with that said, that's gonna be it for this episode. Hopefully I touched on what I wanted to talk about in this episode, hopefully you guys get what I'm talking about as well. In the next episode, I'll be finishing up everything and kind of pull it, pull it together. And I think next one should be interesting too for some of you guys as well and some of you guys who may have this question too as well in your mind. Now with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already and want to see more, of course I do plenty of other different videos on my channel as well. And of course guys, as always again, I'm your host, Gaming. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.